If you dump an exotic pet in an ecosystem, you can turn it upside down. We have giant lizards that eat the eggs of ground nesting birds and reptiles. There are frogs that eat our native Georgia frogs. And in the Everglades, a snake has completely turned things around. Burmese pythons have invaded Everglades National Park. There are thousands in the Everglades. Now, they're on the move, west and north, which is why we met up with Jeff Fobb in Homestead, Florida. The biggest problem is that they're, they're not gonna stay in the Everglades. I mean, eventually their range will expand as the population grows. Pythons are popular pets. An estimated 99,000 were imported to the United States between 1996 and 2006. But they grow fast, and researchers think pet owners dump them in the Everglades when they get too big to control. Take your baby and tell me about the snake. One of the biggest problems with them is they eat just about anything that's warm-blooded. The only reptile I know of that they consume is alligators, you know, crocodilians. So they have eaten a few alligators, and uh, they can prey on anything, anything they can overpower. Uh, small birds, rodents, as they get bigger, uh, they've even found bobcat uh, claws in them, and that's a fairly wow. powerful animal. Uh, they're, they're incredibly powerful. Even this little yeah, guy is I strong. Yeah, I just felt when, when I was holding him, I mean, I can feel the muscles. So multiply this times, uh, you know, 50, 100, and, and imagine how strong the animal is. Jeff trains volunteers for the Python Patrol, a first response team formed by the Nature Conservancy. When pythons are spotted, people can call volunteers trained to capture them. Jeff gave me a quick lesson on how to wrangle a python. He made it look pretty easy. You want to try it? I'll give it a try. Right here. He's not much bigger. He's bigger. Yeah, he's a little bit. You gave me a bigger one. He looks meaner. All right. The first attempt left me empty-handed, right, trying to press the rubber handle of a pole on the head of an angry back. snake doesn't seem like the smartest thing to do. Back where you wanna... All right. Right now. Dang. He's pretty strong. Push it down all the way down. Now, grab him. Way, way up, there you go. Oh. And the good thing is, now he's getting a little mad. Yeah, that's a good thing, uh-huh. Yeah. He's mad at me? <laughs> I don't know, I think he's kind of mad at me there too. All right. Now, this is the strangest part. You're gonna swap hands. People get really uncomfortable during that, a transition. Now pull this bag over his head. All right. Now, pull this tight. Let go of his head. And he's gonna see how he's pushing down towards mm -hmm. the bottom of that. And we're gonna give him some encouragement to get him to move into that. Come on, buddy. You are strong. Mm, shaking a little bit, that was nervous. Yeah. Well, he tried to bite after you grabbed him. I noticed. But before that, he was content to leave us alone. Yeah. And then after you got a hold of him. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> Biology professor Michael Dorcas spent years researching python activity in the Everglades. Because they eat everything from raccoons to deer, he's already seen an impact on nature's balance. I know that in all the time that I've been going down to the Everglades since 2005, I have yet to see a raccoon in the southern part of the Everglades, either dead or alive. Um, and I know that back in the 1990s and before, raccoons were a real problem in Everglades National Park because they would get into people's garbage and things like that. Here we have this large apex predator that's been introduced onto the North American continent. And at least based on our research, it appears that it's already caused major declines in some species of mammals that were once very common in South Florida. 
pythons come from Southeast Asia. The native habitat is similar to that of the Southeast. Michael wrote a book on the invasion and says pythons could make their way to the coastal Carolinas, Texas, Louisiana, and Georgia. Of particular concern is the possibility they will move into a crown jewel of the South, Okefenokee Swamp. And these snakes, you know, in their native range are found in a variety of habitats. So I certainly would think that, uh, you know, if the climate is suitable, there's no reason uh, pythons could persist in Okefenokee Swamp. The bottom line is never dump an exotic pet. If it's gotten too large or you just can't handle it anymore, find it a new home. Never dump it in the wild. I'm Sharon Collins. We'll see you next time.